Hello, solar enthusiasts, and welcome to Solar News, your one-stop destination for the latest and greatest from the world of solar energy. I'm your host, Zoe. I work at the Solar Center, and today we've got some electrifying updates that will leave you beaming with excitement. First up, in a major step towards a brighter, cleaner future, global tech giant Amazon is making waves in Europe. They're about to supercharge their commitment to renewable energy with the installation of cutting edge solar infrastructure. We'll dive into the details and find out just how Amazon is illuminating the path to a sustainable tomorrow. But that's not all. Over in the UK, a solar energy transformation is in the works, thanks to none other than Michael Gove. He's stepping in to make way for an ambitious solar farm project in Acton Bow Camp. We'll explore how this initiative is shining a light on the potential of solar energy, not just as a power source, but as a beacon of hope for rural communities. So if you're ready to join us on this illuminating journey, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and let's embark on a solar powered adventure together. Stay tuned for the latest updates and in-depth analysis on all things solar. Solar News is your source for a greener, brighter world. Let's get going. The UK's National Infrastructure Commission has recommended the incorporation of low carbon and flexible technologies into the electricity grid to ensure the reliability of a highly renewable energy system. In their second national infrastructure assessment, which is conducted every five years, the commission also suggests establishing a new strategic energy reserve to enhance the economic security in Great Britain. To facilitate these changes, they propose expediting planning process for major projects, especially those related to energy transmission. This should be complemented by updated national policy statements, strategic spatial planning, improved sharing of environmental data, and transparent community benefits for hosting vital infrastructure. Furthermore, the assessment advocates for a substantial increase in electricity storage capacity and demand side responsible mechanisms, which allow for the reduction or rescheduling of energy consumption during peak demand periods. The Commission estimates that by 2035, an additional 60 gigawatts of such capacity will be necessary, a significant increase from the current 15 gigawatts. The UK government is expected to provide a formal response to this assessment within the next 12 months. So what are your thoughts? How feasible and cost effective is the proposed increase in electricity storage capacity and demand side response mechanism, given the substantial jump from 15 gigawatts to 60 gigawatts by the end of 2035? And how will this affect the overall transition to a highly renewable energy system in the UK? Let us know in the comments below. None other than the Secretary for Leveling Up housing and communities, Michael Gove has intervened to facilitate the establishment of a solar farm near Acton Beauchamp in the UK. The proposed solar farm to be located at Sinton's End Farm aims to generate approximately 20 megawatts of power and will feature panels up to three meters in height. The site will be protected by a 2.4 meter high deer proof fence and it will incorporate grazing sheep for the duration of its expected 40 years of operation, along with some screening planting. I've never even thought about how much easier it is to have sheep graze at a field than try and get a lawnmower around all of these solar panels. Initially, Herefordshire Council had required the project's backers, Sinton's End Solar Farm Limited, to conduct an environmental impact assessment, an EIA, due to potential concerns about its visuals, the heritage of the site, and the ecological impact. However, a letter on behalf of Michael Gove, MP, states that such an assessment is unnecessary. The letter argues that the project would not significantly deplete the natural resources or cause pollution or nuisance to the extent that would be considered significant. While he does acknowledge that there might be some adverse visual impact for specific residents and viewpoints, it ultimately concludes that there are no likely significant impacts that would warrant an EIA. Of course, it's worth noting that this development aligns with the national planning policy encouraging local councils to support renewable energy projects, particularly on lower grade farmland. So what's your opinion on government once again getting involved in local council? 
Amazon has made significant strides in enhancing its commitment to renewable energy in Europe in 2023. The company has introduced 39 new renewable energy projects, which include 24 utility scale wind and solar initiatives, marking its first solar farm in Greece. This addition in Greece follows Amazon's inaugural utility scale solar farm in Poland the previous year. In total, Amazon has contributed over one gigawatt of clean energy capacity to European grids, spanning 13 countries. Once these projects become fully operational, they are anticipated to generate an impressive 5.8 gigawatts of clean energy capacity. Amazon's investment in these renewable projects play a pivotal role in advancing the decarbonisation of local energy grids as they transition away from fossil fuels. Lindsay McQuaid, Director of Energy EMEA at Amazon, emphasises that corporate investment is vital for propelling the shift towards a clean energy future and states Amazon's goal of powering its operations with 100% renewable energy by 2025. The company aims to continue collaborating with local governments, local communities and energy providers across Europe to expand the presence of renewable energy in local grids. Do you think it's going to be possible for a company as global and huge as Amazon to be able to make this transition by 2025? And what will that look like? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And finally, Dutch students from Eindhoven University of Technology have successfully completed a 1,000 kilometer test drive of the Stella Teller, which is claimed to be the world's first off-road solar vehicle. The journey took place in Morocco, where the car demonstrated its ability to transverse various terrains from dense forests to desert sands, powered solely by solar energy. The two-seater Stella Terra is designed for rough and wild terrains and has an off-road range of approximately approximately 550 kilometers depending on the terrain with the potential to cover over 630 kilometers in a day when the sun is shining. The vehicle's rooftop solar panels eliminate the need for charging stations or fuel. During the journey, the car absolutely exceeded expectations by using 30% less energy than anticipated. This efficiency was attributed to the custom made converter for the solar panels, which proved more more effective at converting sunlight into usable electric charge. Mobility expert Marita Steinbuch suggests that innovations like those demonstrated by the solar team in Eindhoven could play a significant role in the future, potentially integrating solar cars into the broader energy grid system and even allowing for energy generation via solar vehicles that could be delivered back to homes in the future. What a fantastic bit of news to end on as we all begin the transition away from fossil fuels and head towards a greener future. What do you think about these solar cars? Is it something that you would drive? And do you think it would be compatible for a place like the UK where generally it is much, much cloudier than Morocco? Leave the comments below. Let's start a discussion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And that's everything from us here today at Solar News. Thank you so much for watching. If you have made it here to the end and you want a discount for the Solar Center, head over to the description below. The link to the website is there and you can get yourself some lovely percentages off. Please hit that subscribe button or ring the notification bell. Give us a like, anything you like. It absolutely helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you for some more solar news very, very soon.